So Bradford City's head of recruitment, Stephen Gent, has been a big talking point at so far this season, a little bit as well last season, but especially this campaign, a lot of people not happy with his recruitment. So we're going to go through all of the players that have been signed since Stephen Gent has taken over as Bradford City's head of recruitment, and then we'll discuss whether they were a hit or a miss so far or during their time at Bradford City. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on their form. If you could try and get 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated subscribe if you're new as well we are on the road to 8,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get a comment in as well down in the comment section down below let me know down below if you agree or disagree with my ranking of every player now I believe under Stephen Gent we have signed 36 players in total and I've been very generous in how that I have ranked some of these players now obviously if you're going to be signing a number of players every single trans window not every single one of them signings are going to come off it's league two at the end of the day you're not going to get every single signing right and you can probably accept that but I think at this level you need to get one in every three wrong at the absolute maximum for every three players that you sign you can only get one wrong for the fourth because if not you're going to end up with a mediocre squad and that is how you end up finishing mid-table you look at teams like Stockport and Mansfield who've recruited very very well over the last couple of seasons and they are now reaping the rewards for that you look at that Stockport County squad depth it's absolutely incredible you look at Bradford City's squad depth and beyond the starting 11 there is a lot of very very poor standard players in our team at the moment last year if it wasn't for an incredible season from Harry Lewis and Andy Cook we'd probably be in a similar position to where we are as of today channel members ships are now cheaper than ever with tier 1 costing just 99p tier 2 has been reduced from 3.99 a month down to 1.99 a month and tier 3 has been reduced from 8.99 a month down to just 4.99 a month your support as always is massively appreciated and the more members that we have the better the content will be enjoy the rest of the video before that actually i think it's very key that we note stephen gent was officially publicly announced as Bradford city's head of recruitment on the 2nd of may 2022 at 7 at 58 a.m Bradford City tweeted saying breaking news we are delighted to announce the appointment of Stephen Gent as our new head of recruitment if we have a quick read of the article it reads saying Gent arrived at the Utility Energy Stadium from Skybet Championship side Middlesbrough and will head up city scouting and recruitment operations the 37 year old filled a variety of different scouting coaching and analysis roles at Borough before more recent spells as head of scouting operations and loans and scouting operations manager he said this is a massive football club which attracted me to the role as well as the manager obviously it was at Mike Hughes at the time and the ambition it has so I'm delighted to be here and cannot wait to get started I have been at Middlesbrough for over 10 years and worked in a lot of different roles which gives me a varied background and a lot of knowledge and experience it's about sitting down with Mike Hughes and the coaching staff and outlining what we want in terms of playing philosophy which we have to be aligned on it is important we get it right in terms of the mentality and key characteristics of players needed to play for Bradford City I think in terms of mentality, we've had a number of plays who've sunk, especially in that second leg away at Carlisle. So, yeah, I think that's something we've got to pull him up on. The fact that he's saying we've got to get the right mentality and how we performed in that second leg against Carlisle was absolutely criminal. Uh, the final quote that he says here is the long term is going to be massive for us. We want to bring in players through and recruit them at the right ages and hopefully that will stand us in good stead for the future. City's Chief Executive Officer Ryan Spike said, We are really pleased to have Stephen with us and myself, Mark Anglin Hodges, will be working very closely with him over the course of the summer that was obviously you know last season summer trans window and beyond Stephen will lead our recruitment drive and manage grow and develop our current scouting operations across the UK I would like to take this opportunity to wish him well and I'm sure he will receive a warm welcome at Valley Parade he definitely I wouldn't say has received a warm welcome, but you could say it was at Valley Parade because the amount of times I've actually seen him at Bradford City matches, the fact our head of recruitment seems to spend a lot of time at Valley Parade watching Bradford City play is really bewildering to me. I don't know why he needs to be there. Surely he should be out watching other games, scouting other players, but I've seen him at least probably three or four times this season so far, which I always think is really, really bizarre every time that I do see him. But now we've got that out of the way, let's get in to these additions that we made under Stephen Gent. Starting out then with last season's loan additions Joe Oshaw next year came in on a season long loan from Wolverhampton Wanderers was sent back or recalled in January then ended up at a number of non-league clubs on a permanent deal, failed to make a single appearance with a football club, made the bench on one occasion in the FA Cup against Harrogate I think last season and obviously has to go down as a flop or a miss, whatever you want to call it, we'll call them misses but definitely a miss, didn't even play. Thierry Nevers came in on loan 
loan from West Ham after Tyreek Wright went back to Aston Villa and then was sold on to Plymouth Argyle and was absolutely terrible. So he goes down as a miss. Tyreek Wright, obviously, we've just spoke about there, was pretty decent, to be fair. Obviously, he only spent the first half of last season with us, signed a season-long loan from Aston Villa. They didn't let us have the clause in where if they play a certain number of games, they could recall him. They did recall him. They sold him to Plymouth, very unfortunately, and Plymouth fans absolutely hate him. But his time at Bradford City was a success for Heat, so he definitely gets a hit. I think he got four goals and two assists. Very electric, quick winger, and obviously disappointing to see him depart in that January transfer window. Kean Harrett barely got an opportunity, to be fair. It seemed like there was some sort of a fallout with Mike Hughes, and obviously he had his off-the-field issues. He's actually done pretty well since leaving the football club. Scored a number of goals at for Huddersfield Town, most notably under Neil Warnock as well, but his time at Bradford City was definitely a miss. Talaji Bowler came in and massively unsettled the dressing room with the whole situation with Matty Folds. Mike Hughes and Matty Folds seem to have two different versions of their story, and Bowler, I think, played four matches, only two starts in that time. Couldn't even displace Liam Rydalg in the team, so absolutely has to go down as a miss. Scott Banks, obviously a roaring success. He definitely goes down as a hit. If he didn't have his injury problems, he would have comfortably been one of the best goal contributors in the league last year, in my opinion. Absolute joy to watch. Obviously, it's a shame to see what happened to him. Obviously, this season went out on loan to a club over in the second division in Germany. Unfortunately, did his ACL, I think. So that is obviously gutting for him, but was brilliant for his last season. Got a number of goal contributions, especially towards the end of the campaign. Very, very good player and obviously goes down as a hit. Dion Pereira, obviously, we're judging this from when Steven Gent came in, but I think this was more of a re-signing. This was more of a Mike Hughes signing, but it's still some that did happen under Stephen Gent last year. He was a massive flop, absolutely awful last season. Never really showed what he showed in the previous year under obviously the same manager. I'm not, still not really too sure why it didn't work out for Dion Pereira, but was so good in the second half of the 21-22 campaign last year, though. Didn't work out for him whatsoever. I think he got one goal and one or two assists. Absolutely awful. So he definitely goes down as a miss. Darryl Costello came in from Burnley with lots of promise and excitement and was genuinely one of the worst footballers I've ever seen at Valley Parade. He definitely goes down as a miss. He could not control the football. He mentally kind of knew what he needed to do but with his feet he just never could do it he was absolutely awful and yeah definitely has to go down as a miss and the final loan signing last season was Romney Critchlow while I was a little bit critical of Critchlow at times in terms of his, his defensive attributes obviously I don't think he's started a game in the league for Peterborough since August obviously he joined them in a permanent deal in the summer but he was still definitely much more of a hit rather than a miss in my opinion was very good technically and he's you know distribution of the ball is something that we have definitely missed so far this season would certainly take him over players like Ash Taylor Kieron Kelly players like that at this moment in time but Romney Critchlow for me was definitely a hit so out of all them lone players I'm not really too sure off the top of my head how many there is is that nine lone players we had last season only three of them are hits in my opinion Jake Young came in for a compensation package after leaving at Forest Green Rovers Started out the season pretty well, scored a couple of really nice goals, got a brace against Sheffield Wednesday as well in the Papa John's Trophy at the time. Then, for some reason, just went completely off the face of the earth, disappeared under Mark Hughes, was sent out on loan to Barrow in January. Didn't really work out for him there, was sent out on loan to Swindon at the start of this year. And I think he's the second highest goal scorer in the league. He's nearly in double figures. He seems to score every single week. He scored four goals in one game as well at some point. But his time at Bradford City has to go down as a miss, you know, for the fact we've paid money for him we gave him a long-term contract so far what we've seen has unfortunately been a miss it seems like there was a clear fallout between him and Mark Hughes from what I can tell Ryan Spikes didn't really agree with it and he kind of alluded to Jake Young coming back in January in my opinion I really like Jake Young from what I've seen of him but if you look at his Bradford City career as a whole and the way that he just got completely frozen out of the squad he unfortunately does have to go down as a miss but definitely could become a hit going forward Timmy Odessina again lots of hype and you know good things said about Odessina from his time at Hartlepool when they had a shocking campaign he obviously came in signed a long term contract with a football club I think only played four games last year and that was only because a number of players were either suspended or picked up injuries and it just never really worked out for Odessina. He was sent out on loan at the, I think it was near transfer deadline day or some sometime around then, was sent out on loan to work and I'm not really too sure how he's getting on there but his time at Bradford City, considering I think we actually paid again a compensation package for him, has to go down as a miss. 
And unfortunately, anyway, it looked like he was going to be a really good signing, but unfortunately, he does have to go down as a miss. Amanyo Sidibe, we paid an undisclosed fee for to get him out of Walsall. Obviously, last season, spent the majority of it injured after suffering that double leg break on the opening day. And then he kind of got the benefit of the doubt last season. He looked really good last year in pre-season. This season, though, has definitely flattered to deceive. Scored two goals in two matches and looked like prime Lino Messi, but then... Apart from that, his Brafetiti career, unfortunately, does have to go down as a miss. And I really wanted Osadibe to work out, but it just doesn't seem like it is going to do. And that is why I have had to give him a miss, in my opinion. Brad Halliday came in on a free transfer from Fleetwood Town. And we didn't really know too much about him. Obviously, he suffered a long-term injury at Fleetwood, but has been a roaring success. Definitely a hit, in my opinion, especially this season. I thought he was harshly done by a lot of Bradford City fans last year. He wasn't really getting many plaudits. This year, though, has certainly won over a lot of the fans. He's been excellent so far this season very rarely gets beaten I've said it a number of times now I personally think he is the best right back in the entire division I think he's absolutely brilliant so definitely has to go down as a hit but then Oliver came in after leaving Gillingham three-year contract signed spent the majority of it injured had a decent run around January time when any cut got dropped but overall he absolutely has to go down as a hit uh, a miss sorry hasn't featured at all so far this season with a groin injury last season missed I think he had two long-term injuries as well so so disappointing for the day and Oliver and his time at Bradford City so far absolutely has to go down as a miss. Matty Platt, I think, for the majority of the time, has been pretty bang average. But I think if you've got to give him a hit or a miss, I think he's certainly been much more of a hit rather than a miss. The first half of last season, until he got sent off against Mansfield, I thought he was absolutely excellent. And uh, since then, has been just fairly average. You know, his technical ability isn't the greatest. But as a League 2 defender, he is pretty solid. So that is why I've gone with a hit for Matty Platt. I'm sure that one will cause a little bit of controversy down in the comment section down below. Kieron Kelly signed last January from Bohemians. I'm not too sure if it was a free transfer because the League of Ireland season is a little bit different. But I don't know if we actually did pay a little bit of money for him. But I think I'm going to have to put him down as a miss. You know, he featured at the start of the season and looked very rash in his decision making. It was something that I said so many times where he just commit to a stupid foul, pick up a silly yellow card when obviously we changed from the back three to the back four he was a centre half that was dropped and we haven't really seen him feature all too much in the games that he played last season he played like 10-15 minutes off the bench every now and again he didn't look awful but from what we've seen of him so far this season I can't see him having a long term future at Bradford City and that is why I have had to go with a miss Colin Doyle came in and was a goalkeeper coach slash player and that's not really something that I agree with you know we're not a non-league club I think that's very I don't know if naive is the right word. Last season, it worked out for Harry Lewis, but this year, I don't think it quite has. And Colin Doyle has to take a little bit of blame for that. In terms of his playing career at Bradford City, he's played two games since coming back in the AFL Trophy. But I don't think he's pushing Lewis enough to really give him that competition. And that is why I'm going with a miss for Colin Doyle. Ryan East came in on a free transfer from Swindon Town. Was meant to be maybe the Elliot Watt replacement. In the games that he played, I thought Ryan East looked pretty good, to be fair. I think, especially away at Salford last year, a home to Mansfield last year. Two very, very impressive performances from Ryan East. It's clear to see that Mike Hughes wasn't a fan of him. East was sent out on loan at the start of the season to Rochdale, which I didn't really agree with. He's having a very good campaign there, to be fair. And in my opinion, I think he's more than good enough to be starting week in, week out for Bradford City. I'm a big, big fan of Ryan East. He'll be one of the best central midfielders in the National League and in my opinion, has been a hit so far. But unfortunately, he just hasn't really played all too much. But when he has, has looked very good. Harry Lewis, again, I've gone with a hit. Signed from South Southampton. We've got to give credit to Mark Hughes because it was. if it wasn't for Mark Hughes managing at Southampton, Harry Lewis would there'd be absolutely no chance he would have come to Bradford City. But last season was obviously absolutely outstanding. Must have saved us between, 20, uh, between 15 and 20 points. He was absolutely incredible last season, in my opinion. This season probably cost us between 5 and 10 points, unfortunately. You know, there has been a number of mistakes from Harry Lewis. Overall, though, I still do think he has been a roaring success and I do hope that we do tie him down to a new long-term contract. And Sam Stubbs is next up. He came in from Exeter City in January and I have gone with another hit for him. I thought he was very, very impressive in the second half of last season. Did well to displace Platt and then Critchlow and then Platt again. And obviously, it was Stubbs and Critchlow in the playoffs and towards the end of the campaign. And the both did look really solid, but 
but Stubbs for me last season was incredible. This season, again, hasn't quite hit the same heights, if I'm honest, but last year was very good, and this season I wouldn't say he's exactly been bad, and that is why I've gone with a hit for Sam Stubbs. Matt Darby should join the football club in January, just gone by, and it seemed like it was more Mike Hughes doing his mate a little bit of a favour, because he has been absolutely awful. Scored a great goal away at Stevenage, and obviously a vital tap-in against Carlisle in the playoff semi-final second leg, but apart from that, has spent the majority of it either injured or just not being good enough, not offering enough to deserve a contract at Bradford City. The fact we gave him an 18-month deal when he was 36, 37 was absolutely crazy, in my opinion, and absolutely has to go down as a miss. Harry Chapman, unfortunately, I've put him down as a miss as well. Obviously, I was only recently come back from a long-term hamstring injury, but last season just did not get enough goal contributions for an attacking midfielder. I think he got two goals and a couple of assists in there. I know he was more of a winger and he was playing as an attacking midfielder because of Jamie Walker, but then spent the majority of it on the bench and a really, really disappointing spell at Bradford City so far. But I've got high hopes for Harry Chapman and I do hope in the second half of this campaign he does come good and he could certainly be a player who does turn into a hit. But for now, I'm going with a miss for Harry Chapman. Three more plays to go then from last campaign. If you are enjoying today's video, make sure to drop a like on there for me and subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. Get your thoughts in down in the comment section down below. Jamie Walker obviously spent the second half of the 21-22 campaign on loan from Hearts, then signed a permanent deal I think again that was more Mike Hughes wanting to keep hold of Jamie Walker rather than Stephen Gent going out scouting him and bringing him in bringing him in but again it was a signing under Stephen Gent I have just gone with a hit though for Jamie Walker like I said there has been a few where I've been very generous for because I could certainly put Jamie Walker down as a miss has spent a long period of time injured unfortunately when he has played has been disappointing, I think, overall. But Walker, for me, brings something to the team that not many people have at this level. And I would still like to see more goal contributions from Walker. He certainly added that to his game over the last couple of weeks. Maybe it is a little bit of recency bias. But Walker, for me just gets a hit rather than a miss. Next up then is Richie Smold. Again, very similar to Jamie Walker. Last season, maybe didn't quite hit the heights that we expected Smold to hit. There was a clear fallout between Smold and Hughes towards the end of Mike Hughes's tenure. It certainly does seem that way, in my opinion. It was crazy the way that Smold just wasn't getting game time and we were playing a right wing back in central midfield over Smold. Really, really bizarre decision from Mike Hughes and that is why I personally do believe there was some sort of a fallout. I have just, though, gone with a hit for Richie Richie Small. There has been a couple of times where I thought I just want to grab him by the throat and shake him, like especially away at Morecambe. But then there's some times where I just want to give him a big hug and say, you are absolutely outstanding at football. And right now he's one of them times. He is a brilliant, absolute joy to watch at the moment. I'm really glad he is Bradford City's captain. And I certainly think if he continues like this, we probably will end up triggering his extension and option for a third year. And the final signing then that we made last season was Adam Clayton, obviously. Putting two and two together, maybe we wouldn't have signed him if Kevin McDonald didn't go to Exeter because he was obviously training with us in January. We brought Clayton in from Doncaster and started well, but certainly faded out towards the end. His legs definitely went. I have no hard feelings against Adam Clayton, but he certainly was much more of a miss rather than a hit. Like I say, started out well for the first three or four games. After that, faded and you could tell his legs were gone, especially in that second leg away at Carlisle. So many players were massively disappointing and that is why I've gone with a miss for Adam Clayton. Let's move on then to this season's signings. Starting out with our loan additions, then Chisholm Afoko first came in on loan from Aston Villa on transfer deadline day. I think he's made one start and one or two substitute appearances in the league and has been absolutely awful, to be honest with you. But the fact that he can't even get in on the bench tells you everything you need to know. Definitely a miss. Didn't look too bad in his 15-minute cameo against, I think it was Grimsby Town. Then I think start, started against Harrogate the following week and flattered to deceive really if we're honest but yeah overall for me Chisholm Afoka was definitely a miss. Jonathan Tompkinson has played five minutes in the league yep that's about it so he gets a miss. Rehan Tulluk hasn't looked awful but again overall can't even get into the squad on a number of occasions when he has. He's had maybe one or two pretty decent games but overall I think he certainly has been much more of a miss rather than a hit. Daniel Yagoke definitely a miss. He's played like six different positions and looked 
poor in every single one of them. Started out a right centre back, played right wing back, played right back, played central midfield, played left back as well most recently, and just hasn't really impressed. He's also played on the right wing as well under Kevin McDonald. I have not been impressed though with Daniel Yagoke, and that is why I've gone with a miss for him. Adam Wilson is someone who I have gone with a hit for. Maybe being a little bit generous there, but I think there is clearly a very good player there in Adam Wilson. He's obviously signed a long term contract, so he is more one for the future, but I certainly think from what I've seen of him, does look pretty decent. Couple of goal contributions as well. He's got a big goal at home to Wrexham quite late on a great finish from him, but he's a winger that I like. Somebody who wants to get the ball, be direct with it, look to take on their man, and likes cutting in on that left foot and getting a shot off. And I'm a big fan of Adam Wilson. Kevin McDonald, obviously, got to give him big credit for what he did, stepping up to become a player, caretaker manager. Big, big respect for Kevin McDonald. But as a player, he's maybe had one good game in a Bradford City shirt. Away at Newport, he was absolutely outstanding. One of the best central midfield performances I've ever seen from anyone at Bradford City. Apart from that, has been very average or below average in a lot of games, and that is why I've had to unfortunately go with a miss for Kevin McDonald. Clark Adore, flattered to deceive really in pre-season playing left wing back. Started out the league campaign though, and a couple of the cup matches on the wing. Looked pretty decent then got some sort of an injury or an illness international duty. It all just kind of merges into one with Clark Adore. But since like the third match week, I've been less than impressed with Clark Adore. Hasn't offered enough in a Bradford City shirt. And unfortunately, as of right now, he is going down as a miss. Tyler Smith finally got his first Bradford City League goal on Saturday after recently scoring a hat-trick in the EFL Trophy and early on in the season scoring a penalty against Wrexham in the Carabao Cup. He signed a three-year contract from Hull in the summer and overall has to go down as a miss. Now, maybe he's not necessarily had the game time that he wanted under Mark Hughes and was potentially playing out of position. But when you give, I think he's a 24, a 24-year-old, a three-year contract contract you expect him to come in and score a lot of goals hasn't really done that with just the one in the league so far so with all due respect to Tyler Smith again I think he could be someone maybe for the future but right now he's our second choice striker and we need much more from him and could have definitely had two or three on Saturday definitely should have at least had another one before he got his first goal and yeah overall for me Tyler Smith has been disappointing Alex Patterson that came in as well on the same length of contract as Tyler Smith three years coming in from Harrogate Town has obviously unfortunately had two hamstring injuries right now was rushed back potentially against Tramia Rovers before he did pick up that second long-term hamstring injury which was very disappointing but in the games that he has played he has looked quite good and Alex Patterson is definitely going down as a hit for me Ash Taylor came in from Kilmarnock in the summer signed a two-year contract and has definitely been a miss now he hasn't been awful in a lot of games but he's certainly not been good and I certainly think we have better centre-halves at the football club in my opinion was absolutely awful away at Crawley Town on the opening day of the campaign definitely a miss in my opinion and yeah Ash Taylor for me I think the quicker he moves on the better he needs a fresh start somewhere else and I don't think that is at Bradford City and the final sign and then that we made under Stephen Gent these aren't obviously necessarily in order but the final one we're going to talk about is Lewis Richards from what I've seen of him I think he looks pretty decent I've gone with it hit for Lewis Richards I think he has been pretty solid certainly an improvement on Liam Ryder I'm going to probably say he's better than Matty Folds as well in total then under Stephen Gent we have made 36 signings 13 of them being on loan and I have gone with 13 of them being hits three of them being loans and 23 of them being misses 10 of them being loans so I think it's very clear to see that in terms of our permanent signings obviously there's a few that have maybe been a bit harsh on like McDonald, Smith, maybe you could say they've been hits but I think if we're being honest with ourselves they have not impressed enough for maybe their rage and the length of contract that they have received at Bradford City but I think our loans is clearly a big issue out of the four loan signings we made this season all of them have flattered to deceive last year nine loan signings only three of them really worked out in a Bradford City shirt the permanent signings haven't been awful we seem to have around the one in two sort of ratio going off of my ratings and rankings but our loans are clearly not good enough we were told in the summer that you've got to wait maybe until the end of the window to get the better loans in and we ended up with Chisholm Afoka who hadn't made a single appearance professionally we also got Jonathan Tompkinson who we had to rush around to get some paperwork sorted in towards the end of the window we just about managed to get him through he's only made five minutes worth of action in the league for Bradford City Rayhan Tullicott as well also came in on transfer deadline day couldn't get a game at Rochdale last season who were bottom of the league and 
I would say is probably flat to deceive in most games that he's played for the football club. Overall then, let me know down in the comment section down below. Do you think Bradford City need a new head of recruitment? Now Graham Alexander's come in. Do you think Stephen Gent needs to move on? In my opinion, I would definitely say so. I think we've got far too many misses. And like I say, maybe I am being a little bit harsh. Obviously, the signings that we've made more recently are a little bit harder to judge because of game time and all that sort of stuff. But overall for me, I think Stephen Gent does need to move on as Bradford City's head of recruitment. But thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so, and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in down in the comment section down below. Gen in, gen out. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all very soon for another one. Peace.